Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to use the app for the Laser Pecker L1 Pro. The app is the only way to control this laser, so I thought I might put something together to help people out. This can be downloaded on either Apple or Android devices and makes using the machine quick, simple, and wireless. So let's get started. So when you open up the app, you'll notice we have these four buttons. Uh, you can either choose something from an album, take a picture, create your own creation using their editor, or uh, some pre-made examples. A good place to start is actually the pre-made examples. They have a lot of different uh, images on there that you can choose from. Actually, the first time you even open up the app, it'll go through a newbie guide where it'll ask you to turn on your Bluetooth and it'll go through all of the steps where it, it uh, will pick one of these things and, and take you through your first burn. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Let me go back. Okay, so the first thing that I want to try here is uh, something from an album. Okay. So as you can see here, I have a, a, a couple different black and white images, uh, but I'm going to start off with this picture of the Eiffel Tower. So when I pick the Eiffel Tower, you can see it's starting it in the bin section on the bottom, and it's making it black and white. So what the bin does is it takes away all grayscale. So every pixel on this image is either black or white. So, so when we do that... Uh, you'll see it's, it's making a selection off of what it thinks is the proper value. So if you take this slider here and you start to slide it down, you can see it's, it's shifting some of those black pixels to white pixels based on a value range. So depending on where you put that slider, it'll change where that, that image gets generated. Another thing you can do is all the way over here on the left, is pencil, and this is kind of like a comic book version of that image. Uh, so this might be another option for adjusting some of that. I'm not going to hit the G code right now because G code actually creates an outline around simpler objects. On an image like this, it might actually crash uh, this app, so it's not something that we particularly want to do. Um, if we come over here to gray, the gray, when it's actually burning the image, it's just changing the laser power to try to achieve all of those different gray values. Uh, it, it's going to take a lot longer to burn. And on a, a laser that is not the strongest uh, power output in the world, uh, it might not be the greatest solution for what we want to do. Uh, but, but it is an option. And then over here on seal, seal essentially creates a negative of the image in case you want to put it on a rubber stamp or something like that. So um, to show you the G code, I'm actually going to go back for a second and I'm going to choose another image on here. So I'll, I'll select the Buster Beagle logo. And so if I go over to G code, you'll see that it's created an outline around those shapes. So when, when it's cutting or when it's engraving on the bin, it's, it'll start at the bottom and it'll just swipe side to side until it goes through that whole image. Well, with G-Code, it actually follows along the perimeter of those outlines. Uh, and then the slider will allow you to start to add in those those areas again. So you can see it it's starting to kind of, um, based on your settings, pick the lines that it wants to generate uh, to fill in those black areas. So if we go to the bin, you can kind of see it where it, it looks alias because it's it's really just lines that will just fill up from the bottom to the top until it finishes the burn. And G-Code will create an outline and then also fill up the lines uh, if, if you decide to do it that way. So I'm going to go back again. I'm going to pick that Eiffel Tower. So I'm going to 
pull this slider down until I get to almost the area where all of that black on the top is gone. And, uh, and that's okay because I can remove some of that later. So I'll hit next. And then down here I could go in and I could crop it with, uh, with different crops and then just kind of pinch zoom uh, to move that around and just use my finger to, to move that image around. I don't really want to crop this. Uh, I can add text if I like. So I'll just type in some text and confirm. I can move that text around. I can rotate it. I can scale it. Um, for whatever reason, I, I, I'm not able to actually change the font of this text, um, but, but you can add multiple layers of text to your image. I'm going to delete that for right now. And then right here we have this erase. So what this erase will allow you to do is to edit parts out of your image that you want to work with. And you see down here we have three different sizes. We have the large, we have a medium, and a small. And so I'm just going to take the large and delete the areas that I do not want. And I'm just doing this with my finger in the app. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And then I will click this little checkbox. Okay, so that's my image. Now, uh, depending on whether you want it to print in this orientation or you want to rotate it around, you can also rotate the image here. Uh, but I'm just going to keep it the way it is. I'm going to hit Next. So here... Uh, we still have that function to rotate things around because if you're using the stand that comes with the laser pecker, uh, you can put it in any orientation that you want. But if you're using the automatic stand, the way that the laser sits inside of that uh, stand, it's actually inverted. So the laser is upside down. So if you're using that stand like I will be for this one, you actually want to turn this upside down so that it, it'll burn right side up because, again, the laser is turned 180 degrees. Uh, I'm going to turn off auto cutting edge because I'm not cutting anything. And then here we have the width and the height of the image that we're trying to engrave. Um, so, again, the max surface area that this can engrave is 100 millimeters. So if I were to try to put 100 millimeters in the, uh, the, the width, it's, it's going to give me an error because it's saying you can't do it that big because it's, it's, it's scaling it uniformly. So if I were to make the width 100 millimeters, that means that the height would be more than 100 millimeters, and it's not going to allow that. So I'm going to change the height to 100 millimeters. And then over here, I'm going to change the file name. I'm just going to call it Paris. Okay, so once I've named this, the next thing I want to do is actually preview it on the surface that I want to engrave on. So if we hit this preview button, and now would be a good time to put your safety goggles on. And what this does is this creates an outline around the perimeter of the area in which you're going to engrave. Another cool feature that this has is this Show Center button. So if we click on Show Center, what it'll do is it'll put a dot right in the center of the engraved area. Um, so this is really, really useful if you're trying to engrave on a circular object or something along those lines. It also just helps you to, to really frame up your burn from the beginning so you're not trying to adjust uh, you know, the box just based on where that other laser is going. If you know the center of the object that you're engraving, this is the quickest and easiest way to orient everything. So once that is done, we'll just hit continue. It'll go back to the regular preview after you uh, hit continue on the uh, center button. And now I'm going to quit the preview and click next. So right now this is, this is transferring this file over to the laser packer. So if my 
phone ever lost connection to the laser pecker during a burn, it won't matter because the file is actually being stored on the laser pecker itself. And this, this transfer that's uh, happening right now, really the, the time that it takes depends on what you're doing and what you're sending over to the machine. So something like this doesn't take that long. Something like this where, um, where I had the image, but it was, you know, if, if I chose the gray, for instance, that's sending much more data over to the machine. So that would, that would take longer to transfer over to the device. Okay, so once I have this in there, uh, we see we have a couple different settings here. The first one is, is a set of presets. So right now, this is custom. But if I click that, I can scroll down and I can see all of the different predetermined settings for different materials. So once you select something, and I'm going to be putting this on recycled paper, I see recycled paper and I hit confirm, and you'll see that the settings have changed to that preset. Now, if I were ever to change any of these settings in here, let's say I wanted to go to 80%, you'll notice material has now changed to custom instead of recycled paper because it's a custom value that I did. It's no longer part of those presets. So I'm going to go back to recycled paper. And then here we have the um, power, which is how strong the laser is or, or how much... Basically, it, it's going the full strength that the laser can do using this, uh, using this machine. And then under that is depth. And what you can think of depth is, is really the speed at which the laser will run. So if we went to a depth of 10 or a depth of, well, let, let's, just, let's just go with 10%. If we went for a depth of 10%, that's roughly 30.3 millimeters per second or 1800 millimeters per minute. Now, if that went all the way up to 100 or the deepest it can go, that's about 1.2 millimeters per second or 61 millimeters per minute. So that would be the slowest. That means that the laser would move the slowest and spend the most time burning into the surface, uh, thus giving you... Uh, the, the deepest cut, and that's why that's why that's called depth. And then, of course, at the end we have we have how many passes we want it to do. Uh, and for right now on this one, I'm only going to be using one path. Then we click start, and then it'll go in uh, and, and start to actually burn onto the surface. I'm going to quit it real quick. Okay. All right, let's go back and look at some of the other options. So the other option that we have is camera. So if we click on camera, it will it'll start using our our the camera of our phone. Okay, so I just took a, an image of a 3D print that I had. I'm going to say use photo. Again, we have that bin setting uh, that's making everything very, very dark. It's trying to choose which values are light or dark. And then I'm just going to turn that way down. Something along the lines of that. And then, and then I have another image that I can engrave or burn onto. So you can take images. Uh, you can use images that you already have. Uh, it really depends on how you want to use this machine. All right, so I'm going to go back. Now, another kind of cool feature that this does, once you've gone through this whole process, you've saved off your image, you can come over here, click on that top icon, and you can go to your history documents. And here you can see that it's saving what you worked on. So if you wanted to come back again and run that process again, it's saving it in your phone so that you can access it again. Um, it'll also tell you how long it took to burn that particular thing. It, it doesn't show on this one at the top because I, I kind of went through that process and ran it, uh, and then I canceled it before it went through it, so it doesn't tell you. But it gives you the settings that you use, the size, and how long that took. Okay. So now we're going to come over to creation, and then over here we can start typing in something. So I'm just going to type in Buster and hit confirm. 
And then over here, you know, we have different settings that we want uh, to, to play with. Here we can change the font to different fonts that are on our system. So I'll just pick something. So there. So that's some weird thing that we can do. Um, another thing that you can do in this section is you can create a certain number of things and it'll generate a barcode. So if you wanted to use this to burn a, a, a UPC code on something, uh, you can enter in that value here and do that. Uh, another thing that you can do inside of here is generate a QR code. So you just click here and then you just say www.laserpecker.net and then that would be the QR code for that particular website and it, and it can be anything. So any type of QR code that you want to generate, you can use that to burn. Okay. And the last part of this section is that you can do painting. So if you just click on painting, you can start to draw whatever you want with your finger. And, and then you can burn that as well. And that's pretty much it for the app of this device. So now I'm going to show you that Eiffel Tower file in action. When I filmed this, I actually forgot to rotate the image 180 degrees like I did in the tutorial earlier, which is why you will see it engraving upside down. It turned out very nice on this recycled paper that came with the Laser Pecker L1 Pro. After that was done, I went back and rotated the image on the app like I showed you in the video and ran the process again, but this time with the wood settings and you can see how nice that came out as well. It really does a nice job on these small wooden pieces as well as paper and other soft objects. If you would like to see my overall review on the Laser Packer L1 Pro, you can click the link at the top or I will also put it in the video description. If this video was helpful to you, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos on laser engraving, 3D printers, CNC, injection molding, and all things 3D. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.